Last Sunday lunchtime, I headed off from Roach for an hour or so. Being August, and therefore high summer, the weather was somewhat indifferent. Broken cloud and a strong westerly wind, with the occasional patch of drizzle blowing through. However, there was steam on the main line west of Plymouth, giving an excellent opportunity for chasing a train. There are in excess of 40 railway viaducts in Cornwall. As I pass Moore's Water, I turn the camera on. If you look this side of the viaduct, built in 1881, you can see several stone pillars standing sentinel in the woods. These are the pillars of the original wooden viaduct that was built in 1859. All viaducts on the Cornwall Railway were initially built in this fashion, stone piers with Baltic pine trestles. This was to get the railway open and thus making a profit. Over the next half century, all were replaced with masonry structures or embankments. The last trestle viaduct, College Wood, was replaced in 1934. East of St Germans, with its magnificent masonry viaduct, opened in 1908, the original Cornwall Railway took a more southerly course. The junction is between the flying wires now and you can see a continuous row of trees heading off in the near distance. This original route was much lower and ran on trestle viaducts across the various inlets and estuaries. I carried on some way towards Plymouth and then turned back for my rendezvous with the steam train. I wanted to find it somewhere near not a viaduct, which confusingly is a viaduct a couple of miles east of St Germans. The train was being hauled by a mixed traffic locomotive of the London, Midland and Scottish Railway. Better known as a Black Five, it was designed by William Stanier, himself a great Western man, having been the works manager at Swindon. He was headhunted by the LMS in 1931, becoming their chief mechanical engineer, and went on to design several excellent classes of locomotive. His mixed traffic locomotive was inspired by the Great Western Hall, but improved and modernised in almost every way. A total of 842 were built, of which 18 survive. Our target for today, number 44871, ran to the very last day of British Railways mainline steam. It was sold straight into preservation and thus has never been derelict.
Even with a fine pitched propeller and 20 knots of headwind, I'd been able to keep up with the train as it steadily climbed from St Germans to the summit at Trawalfoot. Unfortunately, once it was over the top, it went sailing away. I had hoped to film it crossing Moors Water Viaduct and on the climb to the next summit at Double Boys, but I had to revise my plan. The train would have to slow for the 50 mile an hour line speed through the Glyn Valley. I could take a more southerly course and try and intercept it again just south of Brown Queen Tunnel near my home. I speculatively stuck the camera back out the window, deciding I would probably spot the blighter as he descended into Los Withiel. Ah, there he was. The race was back on.
I'd had to carry out quite a splendid manoeuvre to catch the train both going into Milltown Tunnel and coming out the western portal. I followed it a mile or so towards Parr and then broke off and headed back to Roach. It would be serviced at the depot at St Blasey, turned on the turntable and head back towards Plymouth and onwards later the same afternoon. The Black Five, very much the Swiss army knife of steam locomotives, had beaten the Aronka fair and square. Maybe we'll have another go in the future.